morning. We have a few announcements this morning. Um, first of all, we'll return to using bulletins and hymnals May 2nd, which is next Sunday, believe it or not. And at the same time, we'll be having reception down in the reception hall. It is Mary Darwall's 95th birthday. Is that her exact birthday date? Third. 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 Okay, so it's pretty dark. Okay. But we'll be down there celebrating that. Uh, socially distanced and all that other stuff, I'm sure. Okay. If the new hymnals were to also start on May 2nd, and they're actually here. I saw them in the other, back in the uh, choir room, back in the back. Um, if you would like to purchase a hymnal and have it dedicated to someone, in honor of someone, or in memory of someone, you can donate the uh, $18 in each hymnal cost, and there's forms out on the tables out in the narthex. You can fill that out and turn it into the office and then it will be taken care of. We're going to have book plates made and we'll type in the information and be in front of the hymnal. And Ollie's going to make sure that the people we dedicate it to are notified. At least that's what she just told me. And as another reminder, excuse me, <clears throat> um, sign-up sheets for Sunday counters, ushers, and greeters are now available as you enter the front doors. Uh, something happened to our table in the reception hall, so it's not there anymore. But look there and see if you can help. I, uh, ushers is underlined, so I'm assuming we need ushers. That is, that is something. On Pentecost, which is May 23rd, we're going to dedicate the new hymnals, and we're also going to celebrate Diana's retirement, the, the administrative assistant in the office. If you would like to donate to a gift for Diana, Kathy, my wife up here, is collecting those, and she'll take your money. Don't send it to Diana. <laughs> that would kind of defeat the purpose. All right. Are there any other announcements from the peanut gallery? If not, then we'll continue with our prayer. <clears throat> Our opening hymn is the King of Love. 
Love by Shepherd Is, to be presented by Kathy Lincourt and Dennis Shepherd. shepherd by the leading of your spirit help us to listen for your voice and follow in your paths all the days of our lives in Jesus' name amen our old testament reading today is a familiar one psalm 23 you can draw it along in your head if you want the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God. Amen. It feels 
feels so good to take this off. <laughs> Aren't we all looking forward to the day when we don't have to put them on anymore? <laughs> Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I was reading one of those clickbait stories on the internet. A lot of people talking about things that they do to show their spouses or their significant others things that they do to show that they love them. People mention things like flowers for no particular reason or little notes left in unexpected places. And there were also some more creative things. One guy wrote, I tell the kids that the Oreos are all gone. Then she and I share the last ones after they go to bed. <laughs> One woman wrote, Saturday morning, blueberry waffles. I got his mother's recipe. <coughs> One man wrote, she likes to cuddle while we watch TV. I get hot after a few minutes, but I make sure to keep my hand on her arm. Finally, a different woman wrote, you know, I've been unhappy with my husband because he never says he loves me. And when I try to talk to him about it, he gets mad and says, I never notice all the things he does. I've been reading this list, and I never thought of these things as ways to say, I love you. You may have just saved my marriage. Our culture puts a lot of emphasis on feeling love, so much so that sometimes we forget about showing love. Both of our scripture passages this morning emphasize the showing of love. In the 23rd Psalm, we see a lot of action verbs. God makes me lie down in green pastures. God leads me beside still waters. God restores my soul. God's rod and staff comfort me. God prepares a table. God anoints my head. God does all these things, leading the psalmist to expect that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surrounded by the actions that reveal love, the psalmist expects to dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. To which we can only say, Amen. That same emphasis on the doing of love is evident in our New Testament passage from the letter we call 1 John. This letter was written to a church that was struggling in the face of a false teaching called Gnosticism. Gnosticism, and oversimplifying here, Gnosticism held that faith is all about what we believe. And what we do isn't nearly as important. And while our beliefs certainly matter, this Gnostic thinking left the community of believers with no responsibility for one another. If someone was hungry, to them it was enough to say, well, honey, I'll pray for you. And taken to extremes, this kind of thinking left to some deplorable moral choices. But Gnosticism was so popular that the Christians of that time had begun to doubt themselves and their relationship with God. So John writes to reassure them and to give them some guidance. Sometimes maybe we doubt ourselves and our walk with God. Maybe there's a word from the first century that speaks to us today. I'm reading from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. Listen for God's word for you. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? 
Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. May God bless the reading of Holy Scripture. In this passage, John makes it clear that we're expected to do two things, not just one, believe and do. And he says our actions will reinforce our beliefs. A couple of years ago, I was working with some children at a summer camp. We were playing four square. Do you remember that game? You bounce the ball around until someone misses and then they're out. Well, in this group of four, one boy was just a little young for the game. He didn't quite have the eye-hand coordination yet that the other kids had, because they were about a year older than he was. But the older kids let him stay in. He was getting frustrated, though, and after missing again, he turned to me, and with all the sadness of his seven-year-old heart, he said, I can't do this. Now, what is the automatic adult response to a frustrated child? You want to encourage him, right? So I said, well, you can't do this yet, but you will if you keep trying. He took that deep breath that kids take when they want to quit, but you won't let them. And he got back in the game, and he missed, but he got the next one. And all the other kids were like, yay, see, you can do it. And then he missed the next one, but he kept trying. One success brought him the confidence he needed to try again. One success, the action strengthened the belief. And we need to remember that in our own faith walk. We can talk the talk, as the saying goes, and we can be full of hot air. I'm sure all of us have known someone who sounded good, but it all stopped with the words. And on some occasions, sadly, maybe we have been that person. But when we walk the walk, when we work to love one another as Jesus commanded, it becomes self-reinforcing. We say to ourselves, yes, this is what I should be doing. Our actions strengthen our beliefs. And as we do this, we increasingly sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. As Reverend Dr. William I. Self put it, because we know we are God's, because we love what is right, and because we love God's people despite our failures in performance. We have all the earmarks of belonging to Christ. Though we grow discouraged with ourselves, we are constantly filled by the gracious encouragement of God. I'd like to close with a story about the gracious encouragement told by the actor Doug Storm in his autobiography, Making It on Broadway. Storm writes, I was with the national tour of Les Miserables, and we were performing in Salt Lake City. At the time, we were doing the poster sales for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. If someone donated $50, 
they would receive a poster signed by the entire cast. After one performance, I was in costume selling posters in the lobby. I noticed a little girl who was looking at me. I heard her say, please, mom, please, please, can I have a poster? Oh, please, please, please. Her mother said no, and they walked away. It was a moment I will never forget. In my left ear, quite distinctly, I heard a little whisper and said, go, Doug, go. And suddenly, without giving it any more thought, I took off in full costume outside the theater. Now I'm going to pause here. A theater person explained this to me. You just don't do that. If you're a professional, it isn't done. When you're in costume and makeup, you are on stage or you are in the theater. You don't go out. But he did. After walking through the crowds, I saw the girl and her mother down the block. They had already crossed the street. As I was running down the street in my lay men's costume, I thought I was so busted. But I didn't really care. As I approached the girl, I said, excuse me. She turned around and just stared. You forgot your poster. I handed her a poster and I was gone. I turned around and ran back to the theater before anyone could say anything. I went to the company manager's office and I said, I gave one of the posters away. Here's $50, my contribution. A few days later, there was a letter that showed up on the call board. It read, Dear cast of Les Mis, you moved me so much, thank you. I also want to thank you for giving my daughter the poster. I don't know who you were, but it was a nice young man. And he was gone before anyone could say thank you. Let me tell you a little about my daughter. She's sick. She was not expected to live past a very young age. She always wanted to see Les Mis. They even snuck her out of the hospital that night so that she could see the show. The tickets were a gift from a family friend. I'm a single mom. Money is very tight. It broke my heart to not be able to buy the poster for her. Thank you so much, whoever you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The whole cast was standing around weeping. I didn't say a word. Four years later, the night before the Scarlet Pimpernel closed, I remember being bitter and jaded. Soon, I would be unemployed again. Out of nowhere, at the stage door, I heard a little voice, Mr. Storm? I thought, oh no, who's calling me Mr. Storm? I looked down, I froze, it was that same little girl. Hi, I knew you were in the show because I've been following it on the internet. I brought you a little package, here's a card. Oh my gosh, how are you doing? Do you want to come in? Are you seeing the show tonight? No, she said. I'm not seeing the show tonight. I'm seeing it tomorrow. I'm seeing the last one. I said, why don't you come around tomorrow before the show? I'll take you backstage. My theater friend also explained to me that's really kind of an honor when they invite you to come early and they'll take you backstage. I went upstairs and started putting on my makeup. I stopped for a second to read her card. I just want to let you know that I've been accepted to NYU Tisch School of the Arts for Drama, and I'm going to enroll because someday I want to give a kid a poster. Thank you for helping shape my life. I lost it. In a moment of my own despair and selfish, jaded bitterness, there was that kid. Everything came full circle. God doesn't always whisper clearly in our left ears. 
but God's guidance is there for us in a hundred different ways. Sometimes the good we do in the world is noticed. Sometimes it isn't. And sometimes God blesses it and sends it back to us a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. We may not see it yet, but God sees it. Let us continue to lay down our lives for one another in joyful obedience to Him. Amen? Amen. Do we have a hymn? Well, yes, actually my son-in-law, her son, told me yesterday that 
that she was going to a swim bed. And I said, what is that? That sounds like an amusement ride. <laughs> it does. So I got online, and it is called a swing bed or swing room. And it's where they take you from your other room, which has all the stuff in it, the chunky for emergency, over to this other room, which is kind of like a, a hotel room in the hospital. So, and they should do therapy and everything in there. So here in Cater County. It has nothing to do with movement and everything no, about the transition. Fine. Concerns. All right, then let's let's go to God in prayer. Today's prayer is responsive. When I say God of goodness and mercy, you say, hear our prayer. With boldness, let us offer our prayers to the shepherd of our souls. We pray for the church in every place. Gather us together and make us one one in ministry and mission to the world, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Anoint all leaders with your wisdom so that they will use their power to help the poor and defend the vulnerable. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community. Strengthen those who work each day to heal the sick, welcome the outcasts, and help sisters and brothers in need. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for friends and loved ones. Comfort all who are suffering. Walk with them through dark valleys and restore them, body, mind, and soul. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, by the power of your Spirit, help us to keep your commandments and to love one another with the love of Jesus, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During this COVID time, we're not passing an offering plate, but let's take a moment and think about what we might offer to God in the days and weeks to come. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the goods of the world and sees a brother or sister in need yet refuses to help? With love for God and neighbor, let us pause in silent prayer to offer our lives to the Lord.
May the goodness and mercy of God follow you all the days of your life. And at your life's end, may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever.